Hi, I'm Lou from Lou Author Designs and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these lovely quilt as you go panels. You can then turn them into anything you like from small little coasters to bigger mug rugs and placemats. If you want to, you can continue using this technique to make any size of project you like. Cushions, table runners, it's up to you. This project is great for using up your scraps of fabric, which you'll need a selection of in a multiple of different sizes, and your batting scraps. It's best to use batting that's not got too much loft. I like to use Fleece Lean 8020 because it's got quite a slim line loft to it. So it, it's great for projects like coasters and table mats and things like that. Make sure all your batting is of the same sort so that you're not having a variety of different uh, thicknesses. You can use some really small scraps for this. I'll be showing you how to join them to create a bigger panel as big as you like. For this project, you will need some batting scraps or a larger piece if you have them available and some fabric scraps. You're going to need some small ones, some bigger ones, but if you've just got small ones, that's great too. I'll show you how to join them to create bigger pieces. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you have any questions, you can let me know. You can find me on social media as Lou Auth Designs. The first thing we're going to do is prepare our batting. Now this project is great for those smaller scraps that aren't big enough for quilts or even cushions. These are great. So if you have a whole piece that's this sort of size, that's great, you can use it as a coaster or a mug rug. If however, you have these tiny little off cuts and scraps you want to use, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to join them together to create a big enough panel of batting that you can use it for your coaster or your mug rug or table runner, placemat, whatever size of project you want to do. So the first thing we need to do when joining these smaller bits is take one and square it up or at least straighten the edges. So for example, with this one, we've got like a curved edge here. We've got a raggedy edge here. They're not very straight. So I'm going to straighten those up so that we can join them together. So I'm going to trim that little bit off, turn it around, and then just make sure that I'm squaring it off. So I'm going to make sure that this line is straight, and then I'm going to cut straight down there and trim that off. I can continue going and trimming it all off, but I will just straighten this one up. I'm not too worried about the other edge yet. This might be, so we might join along there, or there, or there. I'm gonna leave that for now. We might use that later. We might not need to square it up. And then I'll do the same for my other bits. Once we have trimmed up all our batting pieces, it's time to sew them together. So I am going to, let's have a look. I'm gonna sew these two together, and then I can attach that once sewn together to that piece. So let's focus on these two now. What you want to do is make sure that they're both facing the same way. So with batting, one's got a sort of smoother side and one's got a more bumpy side. So I'm going to make sure that they're both facing the same way. And then we're gonna line up the straight edges together and we're gonna just butt those right up together. And if all trimmed nicely, they should really nest well together. Then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to zigzag stitch over this join here. And then it will look something like this. I have set my machine so the width is set to 5 and the distance between the stitches is set to 1.5. And I will show you that now. I don't recommend you use a hot pink to stitch them together. I'd recommend a cream or something that blends really well with the batting that you've got. I have used a lovely pink colour so that you can see the stitches better. Okay, so I'm just going to press those up against each other. Lower my needle one side. And where my foot has got a line here in the middle, I'm going to keep that in line with here as I sew. 
so that the stitches land an equal distance either side of that join. that's what it should look like. The batting shouldn't be overlapping each other, they should just be pressed gently up against each other and that zigzag stitch is just holding them together an equal distance either side of the join. Once we have that joined we can continue joining our batting until we get to the size that we want for the project that we are doing. So you would continue and zigzag down there and if you're doing uh, a mug rug, that would be maybe quite a nice size, especially as we want the batting a bit bigger than our project finished project and we'll trim it down afterwards. So I'm going to join that together and then we can continue to make our mug rug. Okay, so I've joined that last one together and I've done that one in cream so you can see how much better it blends between the two so it won't show up through your fabrics into your project. So once we have joined the batting, we're going to pop that to one side for now while we prepare our fabric scraps. So you will need um, fabric in a variety of different sizes. We can use very tiny bits, but as it grows, we will need slightly longer bits. What we will need to do is make sure everything is pressed well before we begin, and then we will trim it down. It doesn't need to be straight as much like the batting was but we're going to make sure we don't have any odd shapes. So I'm gonna cut this into two. I'm gonna cut it up here. I separate that and then I will just trim that down a bit, trim those edges off. Obviously need to change my rotary blade. And then I've got that one and we'll just get rid of those little bits and then we'll do the same for this one. Okay, and we'll do that for all our fabrics so that we have a nice selection in a variety of different shapes and sizes and then we can begin. Once you have got all your scraps of a variety of different sizes trimmed up, we are going to just move those to one side and bring back our batting. I have delayed this up with just a plain cotton print underneath to act as the backing of our mug rug project. And then I am going to take my centerpiece, which I'm going to use quite a small little scrap here that has got a little fussy cut around my strawberry. I'm going to lay that on and then I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to quilt just that layer, just that piece down. So I'm going to do straight lines, but if you wanted to, you could do any type of quilting that you want, but just on this bit here. When that's done, it'll look like this. So I've just got one patch stitched down on top. Then we're going to take our next piece and attach it to the top. So we're going to lay them right sides together. And then we're going to stitch along here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And it doesn't matter now if you want to go a bit improv, give it a bit of an angle. You can keep it quite straight or you can go for an organic look. It's up to you. So I'm just going to stitch over there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Which will then look like this. We're then going to fold that back. And if you want to, you can give that a little press. I think a finger roll will be fine and then we're going to quilt along here and that's sewn on this is what it's going to be looking like I'm then going to continue covering the raw edges as I go you want to make sure that when you're laying your next piece of fabric down that the raw edge is completely covered so if for example I want to choose this piece next it doesn't fully cover this raw edge here so I couldn't do that but what I could do is sew these two together separately, bring them over here and then join them on. So I have just joined those two together. 
you would then give that a press and then you've got something you can attach to the next bit. As this isn't straight, I'm just going to straighten this here because we've got a little discrepancy in the sizes and then I'm going to attach it there. Now we take it over and we quilt it. And then we just keep layering up until the whole piece is covered. Again, making sure the raw edges are covered by the piece that you're going to be sewing on next. Sew that down, flip it over, give it a press, finger press is fine, and then quilt it down. With the quilting, I'm choosing to go from edge, to raw edge to raw edge so that I don't have to bury any threads because they will be caught later by other fabrics either side. But you can quilt however you want. If you want to go between the seams, you can do that. Just remember to bury or tie off your threads later so that they don't unravel. Now that I've done the top, we're going to go down the bottom side and then we'll work our way out with some longer strips to the side. If you wanted to though, you could go top, bottom, sides and then keep going round like that. There's lots of different designs you can do with this. You just have to make sure that the raw edges are always covered. So for this one, I'm going to use this cream one. This will cover the edge, but it is going to lose quite a lot of excess. So if you have something that is a lot bigger than you need it, just trim it down a bit. That means you can save the excess for another project and it means it's not lost in here. It doesn't have to be exact, so I am just going to snip it with some scissors to make sure it's roughly the right size. And then again, right sides together, sew a seam, flip it over and quilt it. Once you've done top to bottom and it's all covered and quilted, we can start for going out. And it's exactly the same. We're going to lay it right sides together. Again, we're going to make sure all those raw edges are covered by this seam. So I can scoot it up to the shortest part, sew a quarter of an inch long here, fold it over and quilt it. For the next piece, I decided to make use of some smaller pieces and sew those together first. Then I can again lay that on top right sides together. Sew a quarter of an inch seam down, fold that back and quilt that. Once that's all quilted down, we're going to do exactly the same for the other side. Again, making sure that all those raw edges are covered each time you add a new piece. Once you have added all the fabrics you want, you just need to give it one last press and trim it down. I have literally trimmed away the excess, so it's still quite a large piece for a mug rug, but I've got space for a nice big mug and lots of space for biscuits. I'm happy with that. But if you want to, you can reduce it down in size a bit more. As long as all the raw edges are trimmed away, that is fine. We've got no exposed raw edges here other than right round the edge where we're going to bind it. I have gone with one colour, one fabric for binding, but this is also another great opportunity to use up those smaller scraps for the binding as well. I cut my binding to two and a half inch wide, fold them wrong sides together and press. I like to attach it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way round the front and then fold it back under the underside and hand stitch in place. And this is what it should look like when it's done.